today we're taking a look at the Hector. This is a new research bureau ship. Haven't had one of those for a little while now, so it's interesting to see what they've come up with. This is a Commonwealth cruiser where you have a lot of low caliber guns. So reminding us a lot of things like Colbert, Smolensk, uh, even Atlanta kind of things that lower tier the Pan-Asian cruiser line where we also get a smoke screen here too. Uh, the torpedoes actually aren't too bad as well. It's an interesting ship and it's been a tough one for me to really consider how I think about it. I really only started playing it um, today a little bit on stream and that really has to come down to not wanting to play these ships too much before they're in their final state. And Hector, even in this game that you're seeing, is not quite in its final state. There's a few more balance changes before it actually comes out and you'll be able to get your hands on it. So the concealment's gonna be slightly worse. Uh, we'll talk about that in the build situation where I tried to play around that a little bit, where I actually didn't take one of the concealment upgrades to try and mimic what the uh, nerfed concealment would be. But uh, as it stands, it actually has a 10 and a half base conceal and it's going to be 11.6. So I just didn't take one of the concealment upgrades and thought that would be about the same. Although it does impact the smoke fire, which is important on a ship like this. It goes up from 4.6 to 5.3, which isn't a huge difference. So it's not really gonna impact things in this game, but just something to be aware of. Also, we have a normal five kilometer hydro here and the hydro is going to be more like the British DDs, a personal hydro that lasts a long time but doesn't have a ton of range. That's gonna be the Hector coming in. So it's one of these ships like a Colbert, like a Smolensk I mentioned, but we're at tier nine. So it's not exactly fair to necessarily compare it to these tier tens, but it's in the similar vein. And as you saw in that opening part of this battle, the shell velocity is not too bad. Something that can be a bit of an issue on these lower caliber guns at ranges. Atlanta certainly has that issue, but that's lower tier. But at higher tier, Colbert has poor shell velocity relative to the Smolensk, for example. And Smolensk even gets a smoke where Colbert kind of struggles. Um, Hector certainly does not have the Smolensk shell velocity, but it's not too bad. It's very usable. And of course, dealing with smoke screens, it's a massive advantage for ships like this that are quite fragile. Citadels are pretty big, easy to hit, assuming that you're not gonna eat some overpens, which certainly can happen. Um, Hector actually has a crawling smoke, so a lot of these Commonwealth ships and some of the British ships do have this crawling smoke, and it's very, very fun to use. It allows you to play somewhat aggressive like this. I played on the flank to start, but there was a sub there, so I had to retreat and I didn't really have a lot of support there early on. So I come back to the middle and we're losing badly. So I just have to try and make a play. And this Hector can actually make a play. There's not a lot of light cruisers that can really do this. Pushing into the B cap, albeit a little bit slowly, uh, in between two flanks of battleships, right? There's a Z10 very close by, an NC pushing on one flank. And then of course we have the Izumo and um, whatever the other battleship is over there pushing. And we're just right in the middle of that. And it's okay because of this smoke screen. It's really fun to use. And I find that these light cruisers do want some sort of smoke screen to allow them to play in more open waters. So that's really nice to have on the Hector. But at the same time, I find this reload a little bit disappointing. And maybe that's because I'm used to ships with insane DPM at a tier higher, right? Tier 10. Keep that in mind. This is tier 9. And I'm comparing it a lot to these tier 10 ships. So... I think it is overall going to be a pretty solid tier 9. Again, I haven't played enough games with it yet, but that was a little bit of uh, something I noticed earlier on, was the reload's not amazing. But hey, you get a lot of these low caliber guns, the fire chance being around 10% when you build a couple fire flags in there for it, is pretty solid. So it can farm damage, and you're definitely going to see that as we get towards the later game here, that the damage farming is pretty solid on the Hector, Although that does assume that you're going to get spotting, right? Whenever you're in your smoke screen and you're relatively safe from taking damage, you're actually not able to spot for yourself. So you do rely on your teammates um, in that sense. Single launch torpedoes, these are the pretty standard British ones that do around 16,000 damage, 10 kilometers of range, and I'm single launching them there, even though normally I'd probably want to do a wide or a narrow spread. But this ship only gets widespread or single launch. So you're probably just gonna be making your own narrow spreads out of these single launch torps. That's really uh, something you're gonna have to do on this ship, I think. The widespread isn't really all that useful. 
trying to get out of this B cap now without taking too much damage. Unfortunately, my teammates end up pushing into this crossfire after I get the cap. Uh, and of course, they actually don't have the smoke screen that we do. So interesting, creative plays that you could make with the Hector are pretty awesome. I really do like that this is a unique experience. It's not just a, another tier nine version of a high DPM, very fragile light cruiser. At least this feels a little bit different thanks to that uh, crawling smoke. I really, really do like that. But again, this isn't really my favorite play style. Um, so it does lack on the battle impact side. Your impact is coming from your damage. I talk about this a lot when it comes to cruisers. If you're not bringing a radar, really you gotta do a lot of damage to really have any sort of battle impact and have any matches really feel like you can win them and carry them even. So having a radar is pretty important then and this ship doesn't have that, which is probably fine. I think smoke plus HE plus radar, probably a little bit too good. Uh, so good that they didn't give it to it, but it's one of those things that I do enjoy playing cruisers with radar more because I feel like I have a little better battle impact where I can deal with these cap zones a little bit easier. Um, I should mention too, the heal, it's just a standard heal. No fancy Minotaur-like special heal here. Um, look at that, up to 133, 134,000 damage, pretty good. Um, I will say the cooldown on this smoke is very long. That's one of the things that you don't really feel in a normal smoke that you can't move around in, is that you're taking up some of that cooldown time by just sitting in your smoke screen, and then it's back up relatively quickly once that smoke fades. Whereas this ship and a lot of the other ships with fuel smokes or these crawling smokes, you have to wait a really long cooldown period because your consumable's active the whole time you're just sitting in smoke. So you can't just sit and spam out of your smoke and then leave it quickly and then set up a new smoke screen. That's not gonna happen here. Ships like Daring definitely are capable of doing that. Some of the Pan-Asian destroyers and cruisers are also a little bit like that. So a little different here. If you played the Perth, I mean, that's a pretty common example of this uh, crawling smoke. You'll know what you're getting into. Right at the end here, I do want to mention a really interesting thing about the Hector is you got a lot of guns up front. So even if you're stuck bow in like this, I mean, hey, we're basically dead here. We're bow on stuck into two battleships, right? This is not going to go very well. The enemy team is definitely going to be winning this game. But just notice how much damage we're actually capable of pumping out here uh, just with these front guns alone. It's kind of interesting. And the angle you want to take, you can actually get all of these guns off, um, assuming you're in a more pushing in angle. And given that you have this crawling smoke, more than likely, assuming you have decent teammates on your flank, you can stay at a reasonable angle and use all of your guns. So the DPM isn't bad. Initially, I had a pretty rough game where there were no battleships. My very first game in the Hector that I'm not showing you, there was one Bismarck on the enemy team, and it was a tier 10 game with Hakuryus and Midways and insane other farming damage ships. So I got basically no damage in that one. And I felt like, wow, I'm in a ship that really is focused on this DPM smoke screen, and it just doesn't do damage. Well, that was the matchmaker. <laughs> this thing could definitely do damage. 162k in, unfortunately, a losing effort. Uh, but the damage output is there. I don't think this is going to be a ship I'm going to highly recommend for Research Bureau. Of course, Ohio is the best one you could possibly get for it. But hey, at least this ship is, oh, I say only, still expensive. 46,000 research points. So not too bad. Again, you're getting a tier nine here instead of tier 10. And maybe you like tier nine matchmaker. Although with super ships, that can be a little bit questionable these days. As you can probably hear, I don't really know what to make of the Hector. It might be much better than I'm stating here, or might be just much worse. I'm not really sure. We'll see how it plays out in the future. Again, this is just a first impressions. I haven't played the ship too much yet, a couple games. So you can see the Citadel is above water. Um, you will get some overpens, but it's a reasonably wide ship as well. So keep that in mind. We do, of course, have, like the British ships, an improved acceleration, but it's slow to stop, as you noticed, kind of drifting out of my smoke at times. If you want to stay in that crawling smoke, you definitely want to be at quarter speed. Uh, you can mess around between half speed and quarter speed and still stay in, but stick it in quarter speed will just leave you in this crawling smoke. It's a fun consumable to use. Um, definitely takes some practice. Uh, very difficult to use at times, but it can be very powerful. Uh, the build I went with is right here. Again, no propulsion here, because again, British ship has that baked in a little bit. 
Um, taking concealment here, but not on the commander. You'll notice four left over. And I went with reload on the main guns. You can actually buff the range. Um, I don't think that's necessary. 15.6 kilometers is totally comfortable in a ship with sub 10 concealment, um, especially since the shell velocity might be pretty bad out at those ranges. Although I should mention, um, the shell velocity felt a little weird to me. You can see there it starts at 792 meters per second, which is not very fast. Um, and yet it retained its velocity out to range. So maybe it's just got really um, low shell drag, like it doesn't lose a lot of speed while in the air. It just starts out a little bit slow. It's weird, it's weird to say, um, but the shell velocity wasn't a huge issue for me after I got used to it a little bit. Um, the commander build is right here that I was using. Um, again, we're trying to boost our fire chance a little bit. Heavy HE and sap is totally free for us since we have 133 millimeter guns. The concealment penalty is only for ships with above 149 millimeter caliber. So a free 10% damage just right there. Of course, we do want superintendent. Anytime I have a heal, I want superintendent. And this, we even get an extra smoke, which is always going to be useful. Survivability expert. Even then, we don't even have 40,000 HP. So we're pretty squishy. You can definitely die relatively quickly. And again, I wasn't taking concealment because this is not the concealment you will see. There's going to be a nerf to this ship when it fully hits um, at the research bureau. I was going to say live server, but it's on live server here just as a test ship. Once it fully releases, you're going to have that nerf to concealment. So I wanted to play it in that more nerfed state and uh, it still worked out pretty well. I wasn't really noticing that I lacked concealment in any way. It still felt pretty solid. So that's the Hector first impressions. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Is this a ship you're going to be getting? Um, I'd probably hold off. I think personally, I would rather get something like the Ohio. Although, hey, it's a definitely an interesting ship and can be a lot of fun with that crawling smoke. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you have a great rest of your day.